Happy Easter everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the things that I'm working on at the moment and to let you know about some things that I found in the Brian May Internet Universe this week. So I have actually been working on a tone that's modeled after the um, Magic Tour in 1986. It's a little difficult because there's lots of different recordings. Um, obviously there's the uh, famous Wembley uh, gig, which I'm not a fan of the guitar tone. Something is very different and wrong about it as far as I can hear. Um, there's also the Budapest gig, which sounds much better from a guitar point of view. Um, but there's also an album that came out around 1986 called Live Magic which has a lot of clips from uh, the famous uh, Network gig which was Queen's last gig. Now when you listen to Network and Budapest to get a better idea of the sound, I'll play a little bit of um, what I've got. So This one has a lot of chorus on it, it has some delay um, because there's delay on the record. Still have to do a bit of tweaking though, it's not quite as bright as I'd like it to be um, and there's something not quite about it but one thing that I'm fairly happy about is how it fixed how the chorus works. Um, when um, you listen to a uh, chorus um, in this particular rig, it's very important that you don't over gain it. So there's a little trick that I have that'll just manage how the treble booster hits the chorus which should be very cool. Um, I'll just play around a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like, so I mean like just with the full volume. So it's not a bad sound, um, I can't wait to finish it and share it with you, I just actually have to learn some um, some of the live versions there. And with that in mind actually just to say that Craig Farley has done some great lessons recently on uh, Magic Era stuff and he's playing a lot of piano and stuff on it as well. I'm going to link that actually in, in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention in my last video because it was about YouTube channels was the Red Special uh, podcast run by John Underhill. Now this is a, a fantastic sort of insight into um, how some of us have become sort of obsessed with this sound and this guitar and, and how it makes um, the music that we love come to life. And uh, he's interviewed a lot of people uh, that have taken that journey, which is very interesting. And uh, it's a nice sort of insight into, um, you know, how, how the rigs are built and the different approaches people have taken. Uh, it's not, not nice listening. This last episode that he's put out though is particularly cool because he has um, interviewed Ariel and Ariel is um, the uh, American guitarist and so singer-songwriter that has recently been working with Brian May Guitars to bring out her own signature model which has got a wiring situation that's very much like Brian May's but it has um, a different body shape and no trem so it's a very interesting type of guitar. Um, two-tone it's called but the interview that she, um, she's done with Brian uh, or with John rather um, is fantastic it has a lot of insight into how Brian May guitars work how her guitar works about her journey in music and it's it's really worth a listen um, John who makes the podcast has some stellar guests coming up soon so another thing that's out on YouTube at the moment is well worth to check out um, I miss being part of it myself sorry Franco but uh, Francesco has pulled together some of the leading lights of Brian May Coverland to do a cover of um, God Save the Queen in the Brian May style. Sounds absolutely amazing. Everybody's doing an amazing job putting it together. There's a lot of Amplitude 5 stuff in there, linked below, so do check it out. So when I put out a video, I'm getting a lot of um, contact over other social media networks, which is great. I'm looking for help with Amplitude and sometimes asking about my guitar. So I just want to tell you a little bit about this particular guitar because it's a bit of a strange one. Um, anyone that uh, knows the old Gill model will know that it has a uh, black hardware and black um, switching sort of devices on it. Now, what this guitar actually is, this is just a normal BMG signature. I have done some changes to it, but it also came with some changes. So the previous owner had actually put this trem on it. Now, I have made uh, some guitars uh, from BMG into converted trems, but this one actually came with this one. Um, it's great, it's fine. Um, it's It was really, really handy for me um, because I play in a Queen Tribute Band, so it, it does help it uh, make things look a bit well, but it's great from uh, the point of view of just being very Point of view of being able to just get at the tram very easily. Um, it's also got uh, some pickups that I've described in other videos. These ones are made by Yonder Bosk. Um, they're sort of a replica of what uh, Brian has got in his guitar at the moment and they're reasonably well precise in that regard and they meet the same measurements that you'd expect in Brian's guitar. Um, I like them because they're just pretty easy to get a clean tone out of them, great with a 
uh, the out of phase settings and they're very useful for that. If you have a normal BMG guitar, it's worth remembering that um, they don't always come with the pickups at the right height and you have to do a little bit of fiddling there. So I'll just talk a little bit about that. If you put your finger on the low E string on the 24 fret and you measure the distance between the uh, top of the neck pickup and the string, that there should only be a millimeter of clearance between the two. It gets up really high and it's as high as that. So if you can fret it and if there's a millimeter between it, then it's doing the right thing. The same with the other pickups as well, just um, really nice and high. And that's very important to get that scream to really come out. Similarly, I have one other change that I've done is the values of the pot that I have in here are 250 ohms. So what that actually means is that when I lower it down to get the clean tone, it's just easier to get that sort of uh, nice, nice bright sort of clean sound. So all in all, it, it's it's not the same as Brian May's guitar. It's pretty damn close. You can do very well with the BMG guitars with a few little tweaks like that and not have to spend a lot of money. Um, maybe when I get back gigging, I might look into getting a Super or something like that, but this has been doing me very well. And uh, with the new pickups, it's particularly good. So that's the guitar.